Next, we're going to describe different ways in which we categorize and define variable types. The first case is discrete versus continuous variables. Discrete variables uh, are a result of counting, and therefore they do not have decimals. So examples include counting how many people live in an apartment building, counting how many cars passed by us as we were observing the freeway, or counting how many bears we capture in the forest. On the other hand, we have continuous variables. Continuous variables can take any value within the range of values. Here, the range in our example below goes from minus 5 to 5. And our measurement tool can calculate or measure any value in that range, including partial values. So any number can be expressed uh, using decimal places. This is often the result of measuring uh, through some kind of instrument. So we might have a laser to tell us the height of a person, or a scale to tell us the weight of a person, or a barometer to measure how much air pressure there is. But we also find that continuous variables arise through aggregation. Here, uh, in this example, we have birth rates, 2.33 births per uh, 100 people. And in that case, we are um, getting a decimal number by counting babies and counting population, but when we take the, the ratio of these two discrete variables, we actually end up with a continuous variable. Sometimes we're going to measure things using a continuous variable, but then round our decimals to the closest whole number. So for example, I might measure weight to the nearest ounce, or point or one sixteenth of a pound, but then round my measurement up to the closest pound and only share my data or create my data set using uh, a, a rounded pound. So we didn't count pounds. It's not a discrete variable just because it doesn't have decimals, but we can have continuous variables that have been rounded and therefore look like they're discrete or look like they're count variables. We are going to now spend the next five minutes or so talking about level of measurement. And the first way that we are going to categorize our different data are into qualitative and quantitative data. Qualitative data can be observed, but they are not measured. And they're often called categorical data. Qualitative data describes some kind of attribute or characteristic about our observational unit without actually taking a measurement like uh, and uh, without actually taking a measurement of it. So these are not expressed with numerical values, and they often define some kind of type or kind. So a zoning type, a tree type, an eye color, or the major of a student in, a, in our undergrad program. Most other data that we deal with are, can be grouped into what we call quantitative data. Quantitative, quantitative data are observed, and they're measured numerically. So we are going to use numbers to give, uh, to make a data value. With qualitative data, we're not using numbers. We're using words to define our variables, or to our data values are going to be words. Now we can be more precise with 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 our definition of variables using the concept of levels of measurement. This is a standard uh, way to define and categorize different types of data values or different types of variables. And we are dealing with four different scales of measurement. And we're going to go into more details uh, in the following slides. But the important thing to keep in mind is you're going to be expected to be able to tell me or give examples of the different types of variables for each of these levels of measurement. And by the end of the course, we're going to realize that different types of statistical techniques are suitable for different types of, of levels of measurement. So different scales. Uh, lend themselves to different kinds of statistical techniques. The first type of scale that we're going to discuss is the nominal scale. Nominal sometimes means something small or insignificant, but in this case, nominal comes from the Latin root for the word for name. So here, a nominal scale is a measurement scale that involves giving, our, giving names to our, our observations. So here we are usually using a nominal scale to define a type or a kind of a thing. 
and we're using that to categorize our data into different groups or to assess whether or not two different observations are the same or different based on what their categorization is, what kind of thing it is. So for example, if we're studying people, we're often interested in the hair color of people. And we can create a variable called hair color, and the data values are going, going to come from the set of either blonde, brown, black, or red. And if you're not a South Park fan, I apologize, you might not get the ginger joke, but ginger is another way of saying red hair. In coming from a, a, a forestry example, we can have a survey of trees, and we can define the trees as either being deciduous or coniferous. So our tree type variable is going to have data values that say deciduous or coniferous. For housing, we can have a housing type variable, and the data values could be single detached, semi detached, or low rise or high rise apartments. And I want to make sure that you understand that sometimes we're going to use numbers as a coding system be, uh, where, where the numbers are actually representing the words. So rather than saying blonde, brown, black, and ginger, in our data set we might have a code that says the blondes are one, the browns are two, the blacks are three, and the gingers are four. These numbers aren't to be used with statistics in the way that a quantitative variable is. Those numbers are just there as a code and we know that when we see a one in the hair color field that actually means this is a blonde haired person. So something to keep in mind and don't get tripped up over this, we might see categorical data being stored with a coded number system rather than the full word that we're actually using to describe our data values. Ordinal data are similar to categorical data, except the, 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 the data values that we use can be ordered or ranked. So the word ordinal here, you should trigger the thought of something that can be ordered or ranked. And here, two data values, we can see which one is higher than the other one, but we don't have a concept of how much higher one data value is compared to another one. And let's skip to the bottom of the slide here for um, an example of this is what we call the, uh, you know, we have a disagreement scale. And this is a commonly used uh, scale that we measure personality or social value uh, characteristics about people with. So here we have a level of agreement. I can ask a question like, do you support uh, gun reform laws, and the respondent might strongly disagree, disagree, agree, or strongly agree. So here we do see that there is an ordering. So agree is more than disagree, and strongly agree is higher than agree. But how much higher is it? We don't have a concept of how much space there is in between these categories. Just we know that more that strongly agree is more than agree, and agree is more than disagree, and disagree is more agree agreeable than strongly disagree. So we're often talking about middle class, upper middle class, lower class, and here clearly upper class is a higher economic class than upper middle, upper middle higher than middle, and middle is higher than lower class in terms of socioeconomic status. Um, but how much higher is upper class than middle class? How much higher is upper middle than lower class? We don't have a concept of, 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 of distance between these classes, only the concept of ordering. And both of these examples that I've given you here are what we consider weakly ordered classes. So weakly ordered are when values are grouped and then the groups are ordered. So in the economic class uh, uh, example, we might have income levels of families. We're going to classify those or group those income values together into the groups of lower, middle, upper, middle, and upper. And now those grouped classifications have an ordering scheme to them. 
That's an example of weakly ordered. Strongly ordered is when each individual observation has a place in, in the ranking system. So in this case, if I had incomes, rather than first grouping the incomes and then telling you these are the high, these are the middle, these are the low, I would assign a rank to each individual respondent that I have. So if I have 100 people and their incomes, I can give them each a rank from 1 to 100 that tells you the ordering of income amongst our respondents. And that's what we call strongly ordered. And we're going to see examples of data that come both strongly ordered and weakly ordered. Inter interval scale measurements are ordered, but they're quantitative measurements. So we're using numbers to define, to, to measure an interval scale. And the distances between our measurements are meaningful. So we now know which are higher. Uh, if between two values, we know which one is higher, but we also know by how much it is higher. But what we don't have is a ratio, a concept of um, uh, you cannot form a ratio between two data values that are measured on an interval scale. So the classic case, and pretty much the only case that you're ever going to see uh, in this class, and probably out in the real world as well, is temperature. Temperature is one of the only things that is measured on an interval scale. So here, uh, let's look at degrees Celsius. The difference between 0 degrees and 10 degrees, we know that the difference is 10 degrees. And the difference of 10 degrees, that quantity, is um, the same amount of temperature change is between 80 and 90. So, so we, we do have this notion where the, 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 the distance between two data values is meaningful. If, if I say this water is 10 degrees hotter than that water, it doesn't matter if it's 80 and 70 degrees or 50 and 40 degrees. That quantity of 10 degrees is some meaningful difference that we can understand and, and, and use. But on the other hand, we can't form ratios between these numbers. So 50 degrees is not twice as hot as 25 degrees. We can't really form a ratio of 50 degrees over 25 degrees and get a meaningful response. 50 is not twice as high as 25, and 10 is not twice as hot as 5 degrees. And if you're more familiar with Fahrenheit, the same thing goes there. 80 degrees Fahrenheit is not twice as hot as 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It is 40 degrees more. 80 is 40 degrees more than 40, but it's not twice as hot. Now, most numbers that we do encounter are measured in a ratio scale. And here, ratio, uh, just think of this as taking a ratio, taking a fraction. So if you can take a ratio, then you're dealing with, if a ratio is meaningful, then you're dealing with ratio scale data. So ratio measurements are ordered. We can compare two numbers, like two measurements of people's height, and we can see which one is taller. We can see whether or not the differences between those two heights is meaningful. We know how different two heights are by measuring the difference between them. But we can also say that that 10 feet is twice as high as 5 feet. So here we are able to form ratios, and the ratios are meaningful. And really, most things that we encounter are ratio scale. If we're measuring age, we can have the differences between two ages. but 50 years is twice as old as 25 years old as well. So counts of almost anything are going to be ratio scale. Um, and we'll go over some examples in class, and you'll come up with your own examples to practice your understanding of these four different levels of measurement that we just